now that you see my whopping 1.1 meters kitchen that I'm working with let's go ahead and run to the grocery store grab some groceries so we can begin cooking Thanksgiving in my teeny tiny Japanese kitchen One point one meters in length, one flat top, two eyes, two pots, but only one pot fits at a time. So, how is it cooking Thanksgiving dinner in my tiny Japanese kitchen? Well, it goes a little something like this. So holidays such as Christmas and Thanksgiving are particularly hard in the expat communities because we are away from our friends and our families. And not only that, it's hard to get some sense of normalcy as we may not have access to the foods or the traditional thing that we normally do in or home country. So for instance, for Thanksgiving here in Japan, I was not able to get a turkey. I had to resort to chicken wings. I didn't have access to the wide spread of desserts such as your sweet potato pie or your pumpkin pie or your casseroles. I didn't have any of that. But that's okay because I think that's one trait that all expats have in common is the ability to adjust and it's the ability to make do with what you have and you have to have that if you're thinking of becoming an expat you can't be set in definitive ways you have to be able to wiggle and adjust as things come along and you have to change so i was able to finance a little something 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 it wasn't uh, everything that i would like because i had a lot of limitations but i did have thanksgiving dinner down below to let me know how many times do you think I had to wash dishes in order to complete Thanksgiving dinner So at this point in time, we're already down one dish. We already completed making the potato salad. So like I've said before, I'm only working with two pots, guys, and only one can fit on that eye. I got a late start to Thanksgiving dinner. I actually started at 2 o'clock. I got up late and it was just hot mess. Okay, so I started late, but like I say, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I started immediately right at two o'clock. We started making Thanksgiving dinner, we started filming. So now we're gonna get into the most important part of Thanksgiving dinner. This item for me is something that is dear to my heart, and it's the baked macaroni and cheese. I just feel like it's not Thanksgiving if you don't have baked macaroni and cheese, and uh, Everybody's macaroni and cheese is different. Everybody does it differently. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't have a particular thing that I'm not very fussy 
about as long as the noodles are not like soft like I, I I don't have teeth as long as it doesn't feel like that I'm okay I'm not I'm not that person who and I don't want it too wet I don't want it too dry I'm just just stick me in the middle I'm somewhere in the middle of all the extremes okay Yep, so by now you have realized there is no oven. Yes, I was going crazy, guys. I was just like, no oven? Like, what? What am I supposed to do? I mean, I think that my mind typically went to a place like just moving to Japan. It was just like, what do you cook on the stovetop? I couldn't think of any food to cook on the stovetop for some reason. You know how when something is taken away from you, your mind just automatically strays there? Everything that I wanted required an oven. And I'm just like, girl, what are you going to do? So I got my handy dandy toaster oven. And it sits on its lovely furniture of a box. Because if you guys are regular visitors of the channel, you know, I'm always worried about that exit strategy of me leaving Japan and what I would do with all the furniture and all the things that I have acquired here. But I had to get a toaster oven because I just couldn't deal. I, I, I couldn't. So if I'm supposed to be honest with you guys, I have no idea what this is. It's some kind of greens. I figured I'll just manipulate it like I would do with colored greens. So right here, I'm making a honey bourbon brown sugar glaze for the ham. And then we're just going to stick it in the oven and let it bubble and do what it do. So at this point, your girl was getting tired. I was exhausted. I was tired of standing, tired of washing dishes, just tired, sick and tired of being tired, right? And I just wanted the day to be over. I was so mad at myself for starting so late, but I had to complete it because this year was a little bit different for me. Because if it was just up to me eating, I would have just called it quits or not even start since I started so late and probably do it on the weekend or something like that but my friend I had told him that I would make him a lunch for the following day and I couldn't show up empty-handed so I had to finish cooking that night so I could make sure that he would have his lunch um, so yeah at this point I'm exhausted I'm like screw the filming and just get out of my face so here you'll see me making the rice and peas and then I have the barbie fried chicken and uh, uh, cabbage was what I had left to make. Six hours and 48 minutes later, guys, I was the queen of that kitchen. <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself. <laughs> Yeah, but six hours and 48 minutes later, I was finally done. I was so excited. It was so bad that when it was time to eat dinner, I couldn't eat. I literally just had less than a serving of each thing on the plate. And this is what I had for my Thanksgiving dinner. So let me know. How did my tiny one meter Japanese kitchen hold up to Thanksgiving? Did it do its thing? Comment down below to let me know. I wish you guys all a happy Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, whatever your situation is. I wish you the best of luck. I wish you happiness. I wish you just having a day of peace. I know that this day can cause trauma for some people because they have different family dynamics that is happening within their life. But I just wish whatever is happening with you all the best. Peace, serenity, love, light, all that goodness. I'm sending out to you positive vibrations, and I'll see you guys next time. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.